Hello and welcome to Jonathan's Arrow, where we aim to shoot for the truth of the whole Word of God. In today's study, we are going to be looking into Proverbs chapter 31 and finishing up the wisdom of God's Word in the book of Proverbs. But before we do, let us go to the Lord in prayer and prepare our hearts for this study today. Dear Lord, my God and my Redeemer, I want to thank you and praise you for your glorious grace in my life. I want to thank you and praise you for being with me every step of the way as we've gone through all 30 chapters of the book of Proverbs, and now we are in 31. I pray, Lord Jesus, that you would continue to lead and guide in the study today. Give me of your wisdom and help me to be a minister worthy of my calling, Lord Jesus, that I would give the word without fail. As I pray these things always in your precious, holy, and righteous name, Jesus, I pray. Amen. Let us read Proverbs chapter 31. The words of King Lemuel, the prophecy that his mother taught him. What, my son, and what, the son of my womb, and what, the son of my vows? Give not thy strength unto women, nor thy ways to that which destroyeth kings. It is not for kings, O Lemuel, it is not for kings to drink wine, nor for princes strong drink, lest they drink and forget the law and pervert the judgment of any of the afflicted. Give strong drink unto him that is ready to perish, and wine unto those that be of heavy hearts. Let him drink and forget his poverty, and remember his misery no more. Open thy mouth for the dumb, and the cause of all such as are appointed to destruction. Open thy mouth, judge righteously, and plead the cause of the poor and needy. Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. The heart of her husband doth safely trust in her, so that he shall have no need of spoil. She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. She seeketh wool and flax, and worketh willingly with her hands. She is like the merchant ships. She bringeth her food from afar. She riseth also while it is yet night, and giveth meat to her household, and a portion to her maidens. She considereth a field, and buyeth it. With the fruit of her hand she planteth a vineyard. She girdeth her loins with strength, and strengtheneth her arms. She perceiveth that her merchandise is good, her candle goeth not out by night. She layeth her hands to the spindle, and her hands hold the distaff. She stretcheth out her hands to the poor, yea, she reacheth forth her hands to the needy. She is not afraid of the snow for her household, for all her household are clothed with scarlet. She maketh herself coverings of tapestry, her clothing is silk and purple. Her husband is known in the gates, when he sitteth among the elders of the land. She maketh fine linen, and selleth it, and delivereth girdles unto the merchants. Strength and honor are her clothing, and she shall rejoice in time to come. She openeth her mouth with wisdom, and in her tongue is the law of kindness. She looketh well to the ways of her household, and her eateth not the bread of idleness. Her children arise up, and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praiseth her. Many daughters have done virtuously, but thou excellest them all. Favor is deceitful, and beauty is vain, but a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. Give her of the fruit of her hands, and let her own works praise her in the gates. In verse number 1 of Proverbs chapter 31, we see the words of King Lemuel, the prophecy that his mother taught him. We are given an introduction to Lemuel, the king. This chapter was given to him by his own mother, who received it from God. This is a wisdom that came from God to his mother and then given to him. Why is that important? Well, as we saw through reading it, it is directly declaring the idea and the circumstance of what a virtuous woman is to God. And that's something that not a lot of people would like to hear out of the mouth of a man. In fact, most women today think that a man cannot have an opinion about how a woman is supposed to be. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry to tell you, but King Lemuel may have written 
this proverb chapter. But his mother was the one who gave it to him because she received this wisdom from God, and she knew how to be a virtuous woman. The fact of the matter is, is that women today do not do as this word tells us. They do some of it, maybe, part of it, a little bit, but they don't do it all, and we'll see that later on in this chapter. A virtuous woman must be in all facets of this as best as she can, because this is what defines a virtuous woman. Today, a woman is looked at as if she is strong because she fights the norm, she fights the man, and she fights God's precepts of what a good woman is. That is the opposite of strength. Strength requires you to say, I'm giving up myself to do right for others. That's true strength. That's the reason why a good woman is known this way, in this virtue, according to God, not in the world's way. Verses 2 and 3. What, my son, and what, the son of my womb, and what, the son of my vows, Give not thy strength unto women, nor thy ways to that which destroyeth kings. Lemuel's mother is asking him a few questions here. These are rhetorical questions. What my son, and what the son of my womb, and what the son of my vows? These are basically saying, aren't you my son? These, these are rhetorical questions. Of course he's her son. So therefore, listen to her. She's telling him to listen to her. She reminds him that authority is ruined by women, as is evident today, and that authority, righteous judgment, is also ruined by that which destroyeth kings. And then she gives us, in verses 4 through 7, some of those ways that destroyeth kings. It is not for kings, O Lemuel, it is not for kings to drink wine, nor for princes strong drink, lest they drink and for... Forget the law, and pervert the judgment of any of the afflicted. Give strong drink unto him that is ready to perish, and wine unto those that be of heavy hearts. Let him drink, and forget his poverty, and remember his misery no more. Verses 4 through 7 are no longer understood dealings with alcohol. We don't any longer believe these ways. In fact, the majority of the church today says that alcohol is downright evil regardless of what way you use it. We've been over this before in the book of Proverbs. Alcohol itself is not evil. It's not sin itself. It's the abuse of it that is sin. It's the drunkenness that is sin. Many of us, even those of us who declare that alcohol is sin outright, are using things either made by or with alcohol or that have alcohol in some way, shape, or form all throughout our, our house all day long, and you don't seem to have a problem with it. Because you have been fooled into believe that alcohol itself is the sin and not the abuse of it. Kings should not have alcohol. Why? Because kings will pervert judgment. Kings have authority. Kings have power. Rulers have power. Princes have power. Those in authority, elected officials, have power. They should not be abusing alcohol. They should not be abusing alcohol and being drunks. Why? Because they have power to do right, but they also have power to do wrong. And with their power comes responsibility. They must be sober and vigilant, ever watching out for those who cannot watch out for themselves. It is their job as rulers to be protectorates of those who, who rely on them to protect them, rely on them to judge their causes. But it is, alcohol is, a medicine for the weak and near death. The Bible tells us that here. The Bible tells us, Give strong drink unto him that is ready to perish, those that are near death. And wine unto those that be of heavy hearts, the weak-hearted, the faint-hearted. Let him drink and forget his poverty and remember his misery no more. Why? Because alcohol can be a medicine. But it can also be a tool of destruction. Most folk use it as a tool of destruction because they are weak-willed and have to drink themselves stupid so that they can feel some kind of happiness or joy in their life, which is fleeting and usually incredibly more destructive than just letting it be. Verses 8 and 9. Open thy mouth for the dumb and the cause of all such as are appointed to destruction, 
Open thy mouth, judge righteously, and plead the cause of the poor and needy. God is telling us here. The mother of Lemuel is telling Lemuel, with the wisdom she learned from God, that he is to open his mouth for those who cannot open their mouth. That he is to defend the needy. He is to defend the poor, the innocent, and those who cannot defend themselves. Those who do not have a voice, be a voice for them as their ruler. That's what a real ruler does. A real ruler doesn't just seek power and extortion and bribery like our elected officials today all over this world. A real ruler seeks righteous judgment, even at the death of the wicked, at the cost of their lives, to protect the innocent. Amen. Verses 10 through 11. Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. The heart of her husband doth safely trust in her, so that he shall have no need of spoil. Lemuel's own mother is telling him about the rarity of a virtuous woman. Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. And then she is telling Lemuel exactly what this woman would do unto him. A virtuous woman is a blessing. The heart of her husband doth safely trust in her, so that he shall have no need of spoil. He doesn't need to spoil the house of others. He doesn't need to go and steal and rob and, and hurt and harm. He doesn't need to have any kind of spoil. He doesn't need to have multiple wives. He doesn't even need to have children because his wife is that much of a blessing unto him. A good wife, even if she is infertile, is a blessing unto her husband more than a woman could ever be having hundreds of children for her husband. That's just the truth of the matter. A virtuous woman is more important than anything that she can offer you otherwise. And then we see, through verses 12 through 28, these are the qualities that God calls for in a virtuous woman. And we're going to go by each one of these individually. In verse number 12, it says, She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. So, a virtuous woman will be a blessing constantly to her husband. Well, how is she a blessing? God tells us in the Old and especially in the New Testament, something folks don't understand. And I'll leave it to you to see that in Ephesians chapter 5. That a woman must obey and submit unto her husband in order to be a blessing unto him. Not try to rule him or even rule alongside him. A woman doesn't have any authority in the home outside of what she is given, which is over the children. But even in that case, her authority doesn't trump her husband's. Her husband's authority is above all in the household. She is supposed to be obedient and submissive unto her husband. Be a blessing, not a cursing, like many of the women are today. Verse number 13. She seeketh wool and flax, and worketh willingly with her hands. She is to, supposed to work diligently. That's all this verse is talking about. That is a quality that a virtuous woman has, is that she works diligently. She is like the merchant ships. She bringeth her food from afar, in verse number 14. She feeds her home. A virtuous woman does just that. In verse 15, she riseth also while it is yet night, and giveth meat to her household, and a portion to her maidens. She prepares her home. She prepares all the things in her home, and she makes ready her home. Verse number 16, she considereth a field, and buyeth it. With the fruit of her hand she planteth a vineyard. She tendeth to her land, all around. She makes sure that it's well kept and beautiful and that it produces fruit, that she may be able to feed her home, and even feed others. Verse number 17, She girdeth her loins with strength, and strengtheneth her arms. Now this is very interesting and a very controversial verse here today, because a lot of women today think that after they get married, they no longer have to look beautiful, and they no longer have to be fit, and they no longer have to be well, but they can just let themselves go because now they have their husband. They don't need to, you know, they don't need to show off for anybody in order to attract a mate. I'm sorry to tell you, the Bible tells us right here in verse number 17 that a woman is to keep fit. That is a virtue that a virtuous woman has. 
that is a power and a glorious thing that she has, is that she keeps fit. She keeps herself strong and girded with strength so that she can protect and provide for her home. A woman who has no good health cannot do that. Verse number 18. She perceiveth that her merchandise is good. Her candle goeth not out by night. She sells her wares and lighteth her home. She blesses her home with everything she does. Verse number 19. She layeth her hands to the spindle, and her hands hold the distaff. She clothes her home. Now, does that necessarily mean that a woman has to sew? No, not every woman knows how to sew or has to, but she does clothe her home regardless. Verse number 20. She stretcheth out her hands to the poor. Yea, she reacheth forth her hands to the needy. She helps the poor. That is a virtue of a virtuous woman. Verse number 21. She is not afraid of the snow for her household. For all her household are clothed with scarlet. She warms her home and keeps them prepared even for winter and harsh weather. Verse number 22. She maketh herself coverings of tapestry. Her clothing is silk and purple. She is modestly apparelled, and she keeps herself well-dressed and well-kept, because she is a representative, an ambassador of her husband. And if she looks foolish, tawdry or cheap, or like a harlot, she is cursing her husband. Verse number 23. Her husband is known in the gates when he sitteth among the elders of the land. How does this pertain to her? Simple. She exalts her husband. Everything that she's done so far, how that she's blessing the poor, she's blessing the needy, she's blessing others, she's selling her wares, she's being a gracious woman and a wonderful woman. Her husband will be known for her. Even if he's not known for himself, he will be known for her. That's how much she is exalting her husband, how much she is blessing her husband, a virtue to behold. Verse number 24. She maketh fine linen and selleth it, and delivereth girdles unto the merchants, clothing others by selling her excess, and helping those in need. Verse number 25. Strength and honor are her clothing, and she shall rejoice in time to come. It takes strength and honor for a woman to live this life rather than the modern evil women do. And in their lives, strength and honor are her clothing because she has chosen to give up her own life to be a blessing unto others. And she shall rejoice in time to come. Her blessings in heaven are great, whereas your woes in hell are even greater for thinking that your way as a woman today in modern life can somehow supersede what God has called you to be. God tells us what a virtuous woman is, and only by God is that established. Verse number 26. She openeth her mouth with wisdom, and in her tongue is the law of kindness. Wise and kind a virtuous woman is. Verse number 27. She looketh well to the ways of her household, and eateth not the bread of idleness. Verse number 27 is the consummation of all of this. She is a keeper of the home. The Bible tells us this in the Old and especially in the New Testament. That a woman is a keeper of the home. That she is to bless the home. That she is to work for the home. That she is to raise children. That she is to bless her husband. That she is to obey and submit unto him. And do that which is right according to God's sight. And if she does all this, then in verse 28, her children arise up and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praiseth her. Her family blesses her because she has done all of this, because she is a virtuous woman above others, that she is a right and glorious woman in the sight of the word of God and the sight of the Lord Jesus Christ. And in verses 29 through 31, we see, Many daughters have done virtuously, but thou excellest them all. Favor is deceitful, and beauty is vain. But a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. Give her of the fruit of her hands, and let her own works praise her in the gates. A virtuous woman 
doesn't just occasionally do right, but lives it. And we see that. Many daughters have done virtuously. The Bible talks about how many women have done virtuously, okay? Many women all across this world, even some evil women, have at, in, at times in their life done some of these things. But then the Bible tells us here, but thou excellest them all. Why does this woman excel them all, a virtuous woman excel them all? Because she doesn't just do virtuously occasionally or sometimes, or most of the time, but she lives in this virtuous life. She has chosen this virtuous life above the wickedness of modern woman life. And then the Bible tells us that favor is deceitful and beauty is vain. But a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. Favor and beauty are not what you should be looking for primarily, first and foremost, in a virtuous woman. A woman that feareth the Lord She's worthy of praise, however. And then the Bible tells us in verse 31 that she shall reap what she sows, goodness in contrast to modern women. Give her of the fruit of her hands, and let her own works praise her in the gates. She shall be blessed. We all will reap what we sow. If you sow sparingly, you shall reap sparingly. If you sow bountifully, you shall reap bountifully. If you sow wickedness, you shall reap wickedness. But if you sow blessedness, ye shall reap blessedness. This is just the truth of, of the word of God over. And this is what God has end, ended the book of Proverbs on. You shall reap what you sow. All throughout the book of Proverbs, God focused on men and kings as we, not women, are the stewards of his word. We are the ones who are supposed to be the prophets, the priests, the preachers, the teachers, and the givers of the word of God, not women. Now, however, we are focused with the expectation of right women and what women are supposed to do in this life, being blessings, having their testimony speaking for them rather than themselves trying to preach the word. They don't have to. The Bible tells us in 1 Peter chapter 3 that no woman has to speak the word in order to give the word. This is something that much of church today contradicts. Much of the church today says that every, mouth, every person, every man, every woman, and every child in the church is a mouth on the body of Christ. I'm sorry to tell you, if we were all mouths on the body of Christ, we would do nothing but bite and devour each other, and that's exactly what the church is doing today, biting and devouring itself, rather than following the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible tells us that in 1 Peter chapter 3, that a woman can give her testimony just by living a modest and wondrous and virtuous life unto the Lord Jesus Christ. And we have examples of that all throughout the Bible in the Old and New Testament, of women who did virtuously just by saying amen and following the Lord, doing nothing else but following the Lord. They did not have to speak. They did not have to preach. They did not have to teach. They did not have to lead or guide. They just lived virtuous, righteous lives, and men and women changed their hearts for seeing what these women could do for seeing the blessed holiness in their life, for seeing how that God had changed hearts. That is what God expects out of a woman. He expects virtue. He expects righteousness. He expects a quiet and meek and peaceable spirit that has kindness and wisdom in her ways, who is strengthening herself and girding herself with truth. God tells us verily that we shall reap what we sow, what are you reaping? What are you sowing? Are you sowing righteously as a good man or as a good woman? Or are you sowing wickedly as an evil man or as an evil woman? I want to thank you for joining me today. As we finished the book of Proverbs and the study thereof in Proverbs chapter 31 and saw the wisdom of God working in action all throughout the book of Proverbs, all of the chapters, giving us different varying understandings of wisdom so that we can tackle all of life's problems with the word of God and do righteously according to the Lord Jesus Christ. If you like this content, please like, share, and subscribe, and comment down below and tell me what you think so far and what you have learned. And if you have any questions, I would be happy to oblige you with answers if I have them. 
But until next time, may you have a blessed day.